so Overwatch blew up pretty fast, didn't it? I think something needs to be said about Overwatch's success. It became the largest online game of the past decade, with over 2 million players online, one of the fastest growing competitive scenes, and possibly one of the most successful new IPs by a AAA developer in the last few years. So, what's next with the shooter juggernaut? Sure, new heroes, more lore, and all these events are pretty cool, but what if they did something else? Something a bit... different. As of the creation of this video, Overwatch's cast includes 24 different heroes, each with their own lore and playstyles, and while comics and animated shorts are fine when it comes to exploring the lore of these characters, I think we can do one better. Giving a few of the characters their own individual games would allow us to get a more detailed look at some of the more colourful members of our Watch cast, and it would also allow us to expand on the playstyle of these heroes, and in the case of some, it could actually allow us to see these heroes at their true potential. Naturally, there are some heroes I think are more deserving of their own game than others, but given the subject matter, I'd be happy if any hero got to be the star for once. Heck, I even play a game about Symmetra, and who even plays as Symmetra these days? I won't complain, either way, it's more Overwatch. The only question is, how do you rank something like this? The answer is quite simple. How much do I want a game starring these guys? Now, unless you like hearing me ramble on, we should probably start this thing. You go, I got the well, I know at least someone will be happy with this one. So, McCree. Yes, he's a cowboy, yes, he has one of the most memeable ultimate quotes in the game, but let's see what else we have to work with here. According to his lore, Mr. Jesse McCree used to be a member of the Notorious Deadlock Gang before something went wrong, leading him ending up joining Overwatch's Black Box Division, later becoming a gunsling for hire after Overwatch's collapse. The bounty of the concept alone is grounded enough to give McCree his own adventure. Think of it as a sort of sandbox type game. But we need something else to avoid becoming a Red Dead Redemption clone. Maybe have him start off doing his job hunting down your regular flavour of douchebag and have him run into former members of Blackwatch or the Deadlock Gang, eventually forcing him to unravel a conspiracy and take down his former comrades. You can even have Reaper show up, given how Reaper was McCree's former commanding officer during their time at Blackwatch. Add some optional targets or side missions in the game world and we're good. As for gameplay, the basic groundwork has already been laid down in McCree's moveset, although a third-person perspective would work better than first-person. I'm also thinking it would work well if it took an Assassin's Creed-style approach, giving you the freedom to choose what approach you take when collecting your bounty, except less silent sneaky sneaky stabby and more loud shooty shooty bang bang. You could even flesh out his arsenal of grenades, giving him more than just flashbangs. Pretty sure some frags or molotovs could come in handy when hunting down criminals. To top it off, I could see his ultimate working like Red Dead Redemption's Deadeye mode or Hitman's point shooting. Or maybe a tweak it to work as a sort of quick draw system, functioning like Fallout's VATS mechanic, allowing you to target specific points in enemies' bodies to either deal extra damage or to cripple their body parts affecting movement or attack power. And yes, it would be possible to chain these together, depending on how many bullets are left in your gun. <laughs> Old Jack may have his tactical visor, but that's no substitute for skill now, is it? Okay, speaking of Morrison... It's, um... Yeah, a game starring this guy would just be a run-of-the-mill FPS, but who would want to learn more about Jack Morrison's story? The guy basically became a vigilante in the vein of the Punisher after Overwatch's fall, and that could serve as a framework for you to build a game around. I noticed that in recent years, shooters have been slowly moving away from being narrative-driven and instead seem to be focusing more on what you can do with the gameplay. I mean, this is fine, but the stories of those games have suffered somewhat. Not that we haven't had modern shooters with compelling narratives, just look at Battlefield 1 and Uncharted 4 if you want some examples of that. But a Soldier 76 game could be a return to the gritty narratives and world-building of games like the earlier Call of Duty, Halo, and Killzone titles. The pieces are definitely other than the lore, as Morrison's life is pretty much dedicated to taking revenge against those responsible for the collapse of his organization. You could twist the story around halfway through as you could tie it into the recall short and have Morrison run into his former colleagues like, say, Winston, Anna, and Mercy, as Morrison would get tied up in Winston's attempts to rebuild Overwatch and slowly shed his new hard-ass personality until he rediscover the hero he once was. If that sounds like too much of a stretch, remember that there are traces of the old Morrison still left in there from what we saw in the hero short and his interactions with certain characters like Anna. As for the gameplay, just transplant his gameplay from Overwatch with a few tweaks, no need to do anything too fancy. Give him a few more weapons like a sidearm or shotgun, maybe some grenades, and give the tactical visor a few more functions rather than just aimbot, like say, tracking enemies movement through walls. If you really wanted to, you could even give it a skill tree slash upgrade system, unlocking new enhancements and features for your guns and equipment. I mean, it wouldn't be too much, but it could serve as a means to add a bit of depth. 
Give me credit, I'm trying to make a basic FPS game sound interesting. It's hard. I mean, this could be considered cheating, but these two are kinda inseparable. Having a game where you have one but not the other would be really strange. So yeah, number 8 is Junkrat and Roadhog. No true need to create a detailed narrative for these two, they're criminals that like killing people and breaking stuff, and that's all you need to know. I get the feeling that their game would be like Payday, but with a twist. Remember how fun games like Prototype and Just Cause are? Games where you basically do nothing except break quite literally everything? Yeah, this would basically be Payday in reverse. Instead of being ranked on being sneaky, not killing people, and causing as little collateral damage as possible, you'll be ranked on how much you destroy things, with bonus points being awarded for creative kills, chaining and selection together, and by causing significant amounts of chaos. Naturally, you get the choice of whether you want to play as either Junkrat or Roadhog at the start of each level, with each character getting different objectives, different approaches, and even going through different areas to add a bit of variety. Naturally, each character would play similar to how they play in Overwatch. Junkrat would keep its air denial abilities and easy traversal abilities, but I feel as though you could add more elements to it. Give them the ability to sneak around in vents if you want to set traps and play the part of a saboteur, and you can become a true demolition man. Kaboom! As for his larger associate, he'd be the more aggressive of the two, typically getting the more direct approach in each level, blasting through crowds of mooks and soaking up damage like a boss. Naturally, adding a co-op mode would be a no-brainer, with player 1 taking control of Jungrat and player 2 using Roadhog, with unique maps that require two players working together in order to complete, like Portal 2's co-op mode. Or just make regular levels harder. Or both. What do I know? I'm not a developer. Out of all the heroes whose concepts I feel could have been expanded upon, the one I feel the most underutilized is Farah. I mean, I doubt the full extent of the Raptoria suit is basically a concussive rocket, a simple jetpack, and a rocket barrage. This thing is supposed to be a piece of cutting-edge combat technology, and it seems kinda wimpy if you ask me. Yes, I know that in the setting of Overwatch, balancing is a thing, and of course you have 23 other heroes to consider, but if we place our resident Rule 63 Egyptian Iron Man into a setting where we don't need to worry about these trivial issues, I think we can let our imaginations take over. I feel like there's many different approaches you can take with this, but what I'd like to see is a little interesting. For a start, I could see this working as a wide-open sandbox superhero game in a similar vein of things like Infamous and later Arkham games. This would be a necessity due to Farrah's flight capabilities. From what we saw in promotional material and one of her player the game poses, we know that Farrah's suit possesses much more fluid flight abilities than what she has in the game. So a wide open world is essential to allow players to be able to fly around without colliding with anything. I don't care how the flight is implemented as long as she doesn't have a fuel meter. That would be stupid. As for actual combat, I could see his weapon being sorted into a series of categories. Rocket or explosive based, basically rocket launches and grenades. Bullet based, i.e. shotguns and machine guns, energy weapons, they don't really need any explanations, and melee weapons, essentially blades or bludgeons. Either you have one weapon of each type equipped at any time, selecting your loadout before the start of each mission, or you only have two weapon slots in addition to your melee, with you choosing any two weapons from any category. Following on from the trend of other superhero games, I could also see a super meter being implemented, allowing you to perform a different super attack depending on your active weapon. Yep, her ultimate would simply be translated into the super attack for the rocket weapon type. The super attack for melee weapons would basically be a rocket powered ground pound, similar to Infamous Second Sun Cinder Drop. Energy weapon super attack would basically be that one scene from Iron Man 2, and the bullet super would basically be Vanquish. And in some fully destructible environments and maybe a few boss fights, possibly involving Doomfist, because he needs to make a physical appearance, goddammit, and we may end up with something that's equal parts cathartic and addictive. You know what was a cool idea? Sunset Overdrive. You know what unfortunately crashed and burned? Sunset Overdrive. You know who could fit in a game like Sunset Overdrive? Tracer. Out of all the heroes and concepts explored in this list, this is the one that probably has the highest chance of becoming reality. Tracer is basically the face of Overwatch, appearing on the cover and a hefty dose of promotional material. So if Blizzard wanted to go down this route, a game featuring Tracer is pretty much a given. So, gameplay. I mentioned Sunset Overdrive earlier, and its combination of free-running slash third-person shooter style of combat would honestly fit quite well for someone like Tracer. Tracer's gameplay is already ridiculously fun as it is, zipping around the battlefield and loading clips at everything that moves, and using recoil to get out of dodge whenever things go south. Yet, what if we were to develop this a bit more? We already know that she's incredibly agile and skilled with parkour, thanks to both the cinematic trail and the alive shot, and we could extrapolate that to form a similar system as to what Sunset Overdrive had. 
and if we pair it with Trace's time powers, we can end up with a final result that's part Mirror's Edge and part Flow Motion from Dream Drop Distance. You could also take inspiration from shooters like Doom for those combat seconds, seeing as the whole shtick at those games is basically fast-paced gunplay, where standing still is pretty much the best way to get you killed. As for those time powers themselves, naturally her blink and recoil abilities would obviously be translated over as mainstays, but we could incorporate a few new abilities based off this basic idea. In Overwatch, Tracer is all about speed and hit and run tactics, so how about we add in the obvious? Either a temporary super speed mood or slow motion ability. It's probably not too big of a stretch to assume that Tracer's Chronal Accelerator is capable of doing that. I'd even be fine with them throwing in a few melee moves chained into this. I'm thinking accelerator drop kicks like in Gravity Rush and a similar acrobatic combat is in Devil May Cry, being able to seamlessly switch between the melee moves and the guns on the fly. Hey, it helped to keep the combat sections a bit more depth, because no one likes to deal with aggressive combat sections. That shit's nasty. Remember Watch Dogs? Yeah, that didn't exactly turn out all that well, did it? Possibly one of the biggest problems with Watch Dogs was its story, no doubt due to the fact that the main character had less personality than a wet paper bag. Sure, the sequel managed to fix these problems and then some, but I think we can still one-up this. Now, take the premise to Watch Dogs and give it to our favourite Mexican hacker, Sombra. So far, Sombra is the only character in the roster that we don't know anything about. All we know about her is that she's a talent agent, yet she seems to have some kind of ulterior motive. Heck, we don't even know her real name or her age. Any opportunity to show us more about Sombra even is would be well appreciated. We could even get some more hints to her true motivations, ending up with a cryptic storyline that's kinda like Metal Gear, but not quite. I'd go into more detail here, but considering that all we know on Sombra is effectively summed up with the word redacted, I'd pretty much run out of things to say. As for gameplay, I'm thinking of a more stealth-oriented version of Watch Dogs. Seeing as how Sombra is a more stealth-based hero than the other offensive classes, it's not too much of a stretch to assume that this would be the case. Sombra's kit involves a fair few tricks Alpha was sneaking around, so the majority of those could easily be translated over. Although I'd expect that the translocator beacon would require a bit of a rework. May have some problems bringing across something that basically teleports you large distances in a purely single-player environment. That could generate a whole host of problems such as draw distances, reloading areas and assets, and of course sequence breaking. Don't want the players to get stuck in places. The hacking ability definitely could also use a rework, and again more things to hack such as turrets, door controls, and security systems, and also shutting down enemy equipment and weapons and then surprising them with the burst of bullets. Basically kind of like how Sombra's main ability functions, except completely shutting enemies down with an EMP functioning a similar way. Sure, it does seem a little overpowered, but then again, different balancing issues to consider. Just limit the amount of enemies you can completely shut down at any given time. You can even throw in hackable security drones that you could command to attack enemies for you and cause distractions. I suppose you could also throw in the ability to control those things remotely. Hey, Black Ops 3 managed to pull it off and they were some of the most enjoyable parts of that game. Haha, <laughs> who needs autopilot? <laughs> <sighs> I'm gonna need gloves for this one. Hi Reaper, how are you doing today? Sure, Overwatch's Resident Edgelord has become the butt of everyone's jokes, with even other characters getting into the action. However, the framework is in place to build a decent game around. Reaper's backstory is that he was once the commander of Blackwatch, Gabriel Reyes, who became bitter towards the main Overwatch organization due to him being passed over as leader in favor of Jack Morrison. This started a series of disagreements between the two, getting worse and worse until culminating in the incident in Switzerland, where the two were apparently killed. Well, kinda. Morrison somehow survived, yet Reyes did not. Fortunately, he was found by Mercy, and she attempted to resurrect him with experimental medical technology. Which kinda worked, except it turned him into this weird, undead wraith thing. Yeah, back to the drawing board on that one, Doc. Oh, wait, she did. Never mind. Sorry for the long tangent, but it was sort of needed. Basically, Reaper's now a member of Talon, hunting down ex-members of Overwatch. That alone is a decent base for a narrative, a story based around Reaper hunting down his former colleagues could allow us to get inside Reaper's head and see how he thinks. Plus, it might give us an insight into the inner workings of Talon, an organization that we know next to nothing about. So, what about gameplay? I'm envisioning a sort of prototype slash infamous sandbox type of affair, except with guns and wraith powers. With destructible environments because PROPERTY DAMAGE! I believe these powers could work similar to the smoke powering from a second sun. The smoke dash and cinder drop are things I could realistically see Reaper perform, saying go through the whole traveling through air vents and through chain link fences. You could even combine this with a few melee moves, like say Reaper Wraith dashes behind someone performs a sucker punch or neck snap. 
there's also a few things in Reaper's Law that says the victims were found drained of all life force, so maybe we could work that into his toolkit. He could either fire off blasts of energy from his weapons that slowly drain enemies' health, or that could work as a sort of finishing move, similar to the good Zoom mechanic from Prototype or the Ionic Drain from Infamous 2. Throw in a few cinematic super moves in addition to his ultimate, along with a few climactic boss fights against existing characters or members of Overwatch that we get to see, and I could see this working out quite well. I suppose this spot could easily go to Widowmaker instead, but the best I could come up with for her would just be a Sniper Elite clone. Which would be fine, except that would be kinda boring. It would just be retreading well-worn ground, except our protagonist is Mrs. Purple French Assassin Boob Lady. So, Anna. Anna as an FPS class is quite interesting, given that she's a healing sniper and is more based around supporting her team through non-damaging means. However, this wasn't always the case. We know that Anna was part of the original strike team that formed Overwatch, along with Jack Morrison, Gabriel Reyes, Torbjorn Lindholm, Reinhardt Wilhelm, and a mystery person known only as Liao. She was basically the team's sniper, and she was a damn good one too if those comics had anything to go by. A game with Anna at the helm could take us all the way back to the start of the Overwatch timeline, and it would allow further explanation of the event that started it all, the Omnic Crisis. Not only could it serve as a bigger insight to a key part of the lore, the story and tone could serve as a genre throwback to war films and all those old World War II shooters that were really popular 15 years ago, while also being its own thing. You'd most likely end up with something that's part Battlefield, part Medal of Honor, and part Sniper Elite. Basically a more tactical version of your typical FPS with a heavy focus on long-range combat, paired with the type of storytelling seen in the Modern Warfare trilogy. I'm thinking all its levels would feature open areas with tons of cover and various path and vantage points that you can use to take down enemies. The general feel of it would be a bit slower, more mechanical and methodical than your typical shooter. Sort of like what Battlefield 1 did, creating a more brutal feel of the combat, making you feel every shot on every hit. Sure, it'd be as satisfying as all hell to plant a bullet in the middle of a hostile Omnix faceplate, but having each level just feature sniping sections over and over again would get boring. So, how about add a bit of variety in the form of segments where you team up with the other characters, with each segment tweaked to match the specialities of each character? For example, sections where Anna and Reinhardt work together to cover each other's weaknesses, Anna taking down those outside Reinhardt's range and then returning the favour, smashing any enemies that get too close. Not only would this give more depth to the established characters, it allows to do the type of people Jack Morrison and Gabriel Reyes were before they became Soldier 76 and Reaper. We could even find out who this Liao person is, unless Blizzard are planning to release them in a future update. Which will probably happen before Doomfist now that I think about it. Hitting you with a nano boost. Get in there and do some damage. This one was pretty much a given, seeing as I love pretty much everything involving mechs. Hi, Diva! Out of all the heroes in Overwatch, D.Va is possibly one of the most fun, not just in terms of gameplay, but also in personality. She gets along with most of the cast members, with the sole exceptions being the villains, and she clearly has a lot of fun doing what she does. While her personality may seem annoying to some, to me her peppy attitude, along with her trash talking, would make her a perfect protagonist for an over-the-top mech combat game. Basically think something like the custom Robowar Dynasty Warriors Gundam games, except a bit slower pace to compensate for a mech's slow walking speed. We know that D.Va is a member of the Korean military's defense unit Mecha, which was created to battle a giant Omnic that kept rising up out of the ocean surrounding the country. Quick side tangent, that Omnic is possibly the thing we see D.Va fighting in the reveal trailer. Already we have a decent premise to build a game around. Who wouldn't want a game where you pilot a mech to fight off giant robots? We could either base the story around D.Va's time with Mecha, most likely telling the story of the early days of the organization, or it could be a story of D.Va being recruited by the newly reformed Overwatch to take down a much larger threat. As for gameplay, it could be very similar to your typical mech combat game. I suppose you could make it similar to the Doom reboot, but there's enough Doom clones out there as it is. Better leave it alone. So, mech combat. Basically running around destructible environments, blasting through everything that gets in your way, along with some cinematic showdowns with giant robots thrown into the mix. Think God of War or Asura's Wrath, but with mechs instead of rage-filled demigods. Great fun! Sadly, this probably means that their ultimate has to go, but sacrifices would need to be made, as running around outside the mech in a game like this would not be very fun at all. I'm thinking that more weapons and abilities would help to flesh out Diva's basic gameplay, but while knockable weapons, upgrades, and the like are fine, I feel that there are better ways to do this. First, you could have a similar system to Custom Robo, where you have the ability to tweak the mech's abilities and weapons before each mission, with new parts being unlocked by either finding them in the levels or by fulfilling certain criteria, basically creating a more tactical approach to your robotic rampage. The alternative is the Borderlands approach, basically multiple skill trees with each tree focusing on different playstyles or weapon types, effectively making each playthrough that little bit different. 
Sure, implementing a level up and skill point system may be tricky, saying goes to making each skill tree varied and unique enough to warrant trying out each gameplay style for repeat runs. Hey, Blizzard managed to make a game with 24 unique playstyles. If anyone can pull this off, it's them. So, yeah, number one is Genji. I know, predictable as all hell, right? Placing Genji into a hack and slash game would possibly be the best idea since the conceiving of Super Smash Bros. His gameplay would translate incredibly well, and seeing as we wouldn't need to worry about balancing as much, that opens up the doors for all kinds of new combos and abilities of him, and we'd end up with a fluid combat action game similar to Metal Gear Rising or Devil May Cry. And those games are pretty damn good! Sure, he only uses his Dragon Blade for his ultimate and set up to use a Wakazashi and a set of shurikens for his ability in regular gameplay, but trying to fit that into a fast-paced action game would be a little tricky. How would you go around fixing this? Well, it's surprising how many problems are fixed by either simply giving him another sword to use or just having him use his regular sword all the time, only calling on the true power of his Dragon Blade for super mode. Think Metal Gear Rising's Ripper mode, Devil May Cry's Devil Trigger, or Bayonetta's Unring Climax. As far as those weapons in his kit go, just translate them over as sub weapons. Round out the arsenal with a few more weapons, just stun grenades and kunai, and we're golden. Just make the kunai different to the shuriken in some way, either more range or damage, or give the ability to poison enemies or explode on contact. Should give him a few more ranged options when dealing with enemies with guns. As for the story, Genji's lore gives us a fair amount of things to work with. Guy has about as much lore as Morrison and Reyes, and this gives us multiple approaches when it comes to the our narrative, with the best ideas stemming from key parts of Genji's story. One idea is that it could be the start of Genji's tale, an origin story if you will, starting with him first becoming a cyborg and exploring his early days with Blackwatch. Maybe tie in him forming relationships with the characters, typically Mercy. Hey, she's a big part of Genji's story, leaving her out would be weird. We could also tie in Genji hunting down and shutting down his family's operations. We know Overwatch developed an interest in the Shimada clan after Genji joined the organization, so that shouldn't be too big of a stretch when it comes to incorporating it into the story. Alternatively, we could say after the Dragon short, with the reformation of Overwatch tying to the story a bit, and have a game about Genji reuniting with his brother Hanzo and possibly trying to repair the rift between them. Maybe have Genji tracking down talent operatives in his hometown of Hanamura, eventually bring it to Hanzo, who it turns out is after the same individuals, but for different reasons, forcing the two brothers to work together. It could help create an interesting narrative where Genji and Hanzo manage to put aside their differences and reconcile one another after so much time apart. If that's the case, then we could also get a few segments where we play as Hanzo. These would help to serve as a unique contrast to the Genji sections, as while Hanzo is no slouch in hand-to-hand -hand combat himself, he excels at taking down targets from a distance, meaning his levels would be a bit more stealth-focused. This is the Cyber Engineer, and while I know that all of these concepts have very little chance of becoming reality, I at least hope Blizzard does try to take the Overwatch brand in a new and interesting direction. Hey, if these rumors are true, an Overwatch web series might be getting off the ground in the near future. A man can only dream.